Big news this past weekend on advances in the war on cancer, several different kinds of cancer, in fact. And while the results are astounding for some patients, it doesn't apply to all, just percentages of certain cancer patients. But these days, that's what progress against cancer looks like. These therapies are life-changing and life-saving for patients in the right percentage so far. Our report tonight from our chief science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Beverly Sotir is one of the patients benefiting from a new understanding of the biology of cancer. She was close to death from stage four lung cancer, but she got a drug in its earliest experimental stages and her tumors shrank dramatically. I can do everything that I did before, but better. The biggest drawback? The drug called crisotinib works in only 5% of lung cancer patients, those who have a certain protein on the cancer cell surface. Rick Wilkie was preparing to say goodbye to his wife and kids because he had advanced melanoma, the deadly skin cancer. But then he enrolled in a trial of a different drug, and his cancer melted away. The nurses, the... Everybody was jumping <laughs> yeah. up and down. Everybody <laughs> came into this it. tiny little room yeah. and yeah. gave us the good news. But the melanoma drug, ipilimumab, only works in 20 to 30 percent of patients, and doctors cannot identify which will benefit. But they are working on upping that percentage and treating serious side effects, including autoimmune diseases. Any new symptoms at all? Nope. Experts say these results show how scientists are looking at cancer in a new way. Diseases like breast cancer or lung cancer that we always used to think of as a single disease, in fact, are a family of diseases. We need to treat them differently, uh, identify them differently, and uh, uh, use the right drugs to treat their particular problem. Okay, well, let's get you started. But even a drug that treats a percentage of cancers can be a big advance. Lung cancer kills so many Americans that saving 5% would add up to more than 10,000 a year. And the melanoma drug could save some 3,000 and will be available soon. A big issue with many of these drugs is cost. Companies co commonly charge many tens of thousands of dollars for these new medications. And it's a big challenge for the healthcare system. One consolation is if the drugs can be directed mostly to that percentage of patients who benefit, Brian, that will actually keep costs down. As you said earlier today, though, this is what success against cancer right. looks like. Bob Bazell, thanks, as always. When Here at home, scientists have announced what appears to be significant progress toward fighting two deadly forms of cancer. In one finding, an experimental lung cancer drug targeting a gene found in 4% of lung cancers, mostly in younger non-smokers, shrank tumors in almost all of the 82 patients in that study. In a separate study, researchers reported what one called historic results in tests of another experimental cancer drug. This one used to battle advanced melanoma. Cynthia Bowers has more. When Sharon Belvin was diagnosed in 2004 with stage 4 melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer, she was given 6 to 12 months to live. She was only 22 years old. It was two weeks before my wedding, so I was, we were in the thralls of the flowers and the dress and the DJ. She began chemo to no avail. With hope and time running out, Dr. Jed Wolchok of Sloan Kettering turned to a drug still in clinical trials. Unlike chemo that targets the tumor and everything else, ipilimumab or ipi triggers the body's own immune system to fight back and hard. Sharon's results were nothing short of miraculous. She had essentially a complete remission. Uh, after four doses uh, of treatment. Not everyone in the clinical trial had this kind of result, but on average, IPI did increase terminal patients' lifespan from six to 10 months, 67%. It's the first drug ever to show a survival benefit for this kind of cancer. Researchers point out this advance comes at a time when the number of melanoma cases are rising. 10 years ago, 47,000 Americans were diagnosed. Last year, that number jumped to nearly 69,000 with 8,600 deaths. This is uh, kind of a, land, a landmark in, in the treatment for melanoma that will hopefully also uh, go on to other, other diseases. I mean, it's, it will, it's a first proof of principle in a new way to treat cancer. The drug's developers will present their findings at the annual American Society of Clinical Oncology convention here in Chicago. This get-together is often referred to as the Super Bowl for the biotech industry. 
For drug makers, it's a crucial opportunity to find investors. For oncologists, it's a one-stop shop to learn about landmark drugs like IPI that, if approved, might one day save their patients. I think we can actually slow down on doing these scans. I can't even believe you're saying that. These days, Sharon Belvin has everything she thought she never would. A husband, a family, a life. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Chicago. Big news on the medical front tonight. What's being called a revolution in the treatment of melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. The National Cancer Institute estimates there were more than 68,000 new cases of melanoma in the U.S. last year alone, and about 8,600 deaths. NBC's chief science correspondent Robert Bazell joins us with more on the breakthrough that in some patients is making melanoma disappear. It's remarkable. Bob, good evening. Uh, it is indeed remarkable, Lester. It's not very often that a new cancer treatment comes along that will clearly save thousands of lives. But that is the conclusion of a study presented today at the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Rick Wilkie is back to surfing, his hobby now. He's also resumed his career as a commercial airline pilot. Two years ago, he was facing imminent death. Melanoma, the deadly skin cancer, had spread through his body. He thought of his wife, Tony, and their two teenagers. She needs help with them. It's, I, I just couldn't believe that it was happening. All these little dark spots are the melanoma. Dr. And Stephen O'Day of the Angeles Clinic and Research Institute and shows how much cancer had permeated Wilkie's body. Metastatic melanoma is a devastating disease and traditionally we've had no treatments that have successfully improved survival. Until now, Dr. O'Day and others had been studying a protein called ipilimumab, which stimulates cells in the immune system to attack the melanoma. So his cancer is just melting. Yeah, it just melted away. And he After had, a few treatments, again, had scans showed that Wilkie's cancer was gone. The staff, the nurses, the... Everybody was jumping <laughs> up and down. Everybody <laughs> came into this it. tiny little room yeah. and yeah. gave us the good news. Any new symptoms at all? Nope. Across the country, other patients were getting similar news. As someone who's been treating melanoma for a long time and seeing a lot of failures, does this excite you? Absolutely. And that you can feel it in the waiting rooms of, of melanoma centers. The patients are energized. Our waiting rooms are becoming fuller because <laughs> patients are living longer. <laughs> this is producing tremendous excitement, both for the clinical researchers who are in the battleground of this horrible disease and the patients and their families. There are drawbacks. The drug works in only 20 to 30 percent of patients, and doctors cannot predict which ones. In many patients, the drugs set off autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and colitis. How are you feeling? Any new problems? No. But treating those does not stop the drug from killing the cancer. For patients like Rick Wilkie, the drug is nothing short of a lifesaver. Now we're getting the kids ready for college and things like that. And I'm so happy he's here, you know, to do that with me because that was one of the things. How am I going to get through this without him, you know? As we pointed out, all the volunteers in this study had advanced melanoma. Another study is underway to find out whether the drug can work better if it is given earlier, whether that 20 to 30 percent effective rate can be improved. Lester? Bob, it's in the study stage. So what does that mean for people who may be suffering this, from this disease right now? Well, Bristol-Myers Squibb, which owns this drug, says it's applying for FDA approval by the end of the year. But in the meantime, the drug is available through what's called a, a compassionate access trial. And you can find out more about that and other aspects of this story on our website, nightly.msnbc.com. Very promising news tonight. Robert Bazell, thank you.